Hi there, everyone, and welcome to Paper Wishes Weekly Webisodes. I'm Sarah Newman, and I'm really looking forward to showing you some fantastic new supplies from our friends at Hunky Dory. So today we're going to be playing with two of my favorite things, versatile nesting dies and sentiment stamps. Both of these are classic paper crafting tools, and they've quickly become some of my go-tos for card making. So let's take a look. Now we can start with the dies. Here you have five lace edge cutting dies, which can be used individually, or they can be stacked together as you see on the card sample. So let me show you one of the dies. This is the largest one. You can see that beautiful intricate border on there. Now, all you need to do is place that onto your cardstock, secure it down with a little bit of low tack tape and run it through your die cutting machine and you can create motifs that look like this. So this design here is with the largest of our five dies, and this measures about four and a quarter inches in diameter on this inside area, accepting the outside lace edge. Then it goes down in size, three and a quarter inches, two and a quarter, one and a quarter, and then this little three quarter inch guy down here at the bottom. So of course you can simply die cut these from cardstock and you're ready to go. You can also nest them one inside the other when you're die cutting and you can create some frames like you see here. So lots of possibilities there. Again, a super versatile product to have on hand. Then for our stamps, well, you have three large block type words and then eight script elements on here. Again, you can use them separately or mix and match to layer or otherwise combine them. I'm gonna flip over the package because they do give you some really nice examples here where you can see they've stamped the large block word in a light colored ink and then over stamped with one of the script sentiments in a darker color of ink. So this is a great way to use your colored ink pads as well. So we've got some classic versatile products today. They're great for so many different techniques and I can't wait to share some projects with you. I'm really glad you're here today, so come play with us. This card is a fun example of how nicely these dies and stamps come together. Let's begin with the stamping. Now, I love this concept of over stamping where you have a bold word in the background and then the script word or words is stamped on top. The MISTI is a great tool for this because it really helps you to get perfect placement. So for this demo, I'll move aside my card and bring in my well-loved MISTI. And I've got a piece of white cardstock in here ready to go. And I'm just going to choose my um, stamp to start out with. So I've got these three bold stamps on here. Why don't I grab the, the word happy? And I'm going to simply place this down like so, right onto that piece of cardstock. And I like to kind of snug up my magnets fairly close to that stamped word so that I can make sure that everything is secure and in place. And then I just need to decide what color I want to stamp this in. And I've been using the Hunky Jory Prism inks. Now these are dye-based ink and they come in so many different colors. So for my card, I use the Dove Gray, but let's use the lovely Lilac for this demo. So I'm just going to simply close up the front of my MISTI, press that down, and then my stamp is secure on the other side here. Then I'll just take my ink pad and ink up my word. And then I can close this up again and press that down, really secure that down. Now, if I lift this up and I think, oh, you know, I've got a little spot that I missed, or maybe it's not as dark or defined as I would like, I can always just come back, add a bit more ink on here, and then restamp it. So it's very, very easy to do. And there we go. So there's my word happy. Now to stamp something on top, all I need to do is keep my paper in place. I'm gonna clean off my stamp here quickly, move that aside, and then I can decide what I want to overstamp on here. So I've got the word happy, I've got lots of options that I can use here. If I'm stumped, I can flip this over and have a look at some of the ideas on here. Let's see, I think I'll do um, new home. So happy new home, that was one of the ideas. I think that's quite nice. Pull this off. And then 
double check to make sure that I've got it going the right direction. And then I'll simply place this down. Now here's what I can decide. I can have this going directly on top of my word. I could have it going underneath. I could have it going on top. So lots of different options there. But I'm gonna put this right on top like so. And then same process as before. I'm gonna close this up. And then I can ink up my, set, my script stamp. Now I can, again, choose any of the colors that I would like to go with. If I want something really crisp and high contrast, the VersaFine ink pad in Onyx Black is my go-to. This is one of my favorite black ink pads. As the name says, the VersaFine, it's great for fine uh, detail script stamps because it really, really helps to capture the detail. So I'm inking this up with that VersaFine, and then I'm just going to simply place this down again and then lift that up and I've got my sentiment on here quick easy and I think has a really fun look to it I love the contrasting fonts on there too I think that just adds so much style and really nice design options there for your sentiments okay so I'm going to move this out of the way and bring back in my card and we can take another look at this so I've layered the white die cut, which I've done my stamping on, on top of the lavender die cut. Now, because I wanted some more contrast behind this lavender piece, I combined the Hunky Dory die set with the circle dies from Hot Off the Press. Like my Misty, these circle dies are always out on my work surface, which is why the packaging looks like it does but there is a circle die in here that's just the perfect size. It's just a smidge bigger than this doily die cut and gives a little bit more contrast if I'm layering up those designs. Now I've popped the whole piece on the front of a circular step card that I cut using one of my other favorite dies, <laughs> the circular step card cutting die. And I've die cut this from the Carnations paper pack. And you can see those beautiful papers all in here. Now these are the 12 by 12 designs and they're double sided and absolutely beautiful. So that's what I used to create my card base. And then I've just layered my doilies right on top there. And again, I used the Dove Gray Hunky Dory ink for my love word here. Added a little ribbon on here and I'm ready to go. And then for the card inside, I have another smaller doily die cut and the For You Sentiment stamp. Now I have to say, the stamps that I've used just on this one card where it says For You and then the Lots of Love, these are just such great classics to have in any stamping collection. But if you take a look again at the stamp set, you have got so many more on here. So it is a really wonderful value, I think, not only the doilies, uh, dies, but also this stamp set. I think you will find lots and lots of uses for those various designs. So this is one quick and easy way that you can combine the dies and the stamps together. Let's take a look at some more examples. This card uses another classic greeting as the card focal, but it also incorporates some heat embossing. So I first stamped the word happy with the pear green ink, and then I've over stamped the word birthday with embossing ink and heat set it with some gold embossing powder. Now the trick here is that you want to make sure your large word is dry before you stamp and emboss the smaller word on top. Dye ink like the ones from Hunky Dory can take a few minutes to dry and if it's wet, it can catch that embossing powder pretty easily too. So let's take a look at this technique. I'm going to grab my Misty once again, set aside my card there. And I've already got my piece of cardstock in place. I've already stamped my word happy. Once again, I was using the pear green ink for this. And then I can get ready to do my over stamping. So a couple of tools I want to have on hand. Of course, my embossing ink pad. So I'm using the one from Wow. I'm also using the Wow um, gold embossing powder to create a really nice contrast there. I've got a piece of scrap paper here. This is going to catch my excess embossing powder. And I've got my heat tool ready to go as well. 
I also have a fine tip dry paintbrush, and this is what I'm going to use to whisk away any stray little granules of embossing powder that may get in there somewhere. Okay, so for my stamp that I want to put on top, let's see, I've got the word happy, and I'm gonna take this stamp that says for you and place that right on top. Same process as before, just gonna close this up and secure that down and then ink up my word, my words. Now, same um, as I've shown you before, if you think, oh, I've stamped this down, it's a little hard to see, I'm not sure if I've gotten it all, you can, of course, ink it up and have another go. Always possible. Okay, so press that down. Now, here's where I want to work fairly quickly. So I'm gonna scoot aside these magnets and set aside my misty, And then I'm going to take my scrap piece of paper here, pop this right inside, and take my gold embossing powder and simply sprinkle this right on top. And then dump off any excess. Kind of tap that off. And there you can see where I've got my gold embossing powder on there. Tap a little bit more and try and get off some of the excess powder on there. And then what I can do, again, bring in that paintbrush and sort of shimmy off any of my embossing powder that's stuck to my large word. So I stamp this uh, word happy and then I heat set it. I just gave it a quick zip zap with my heat tool and probably should have waited a few more minutes, but I just couldn't. Okay, tap that a little bit there too. This is where having a really fine tip paintbrush will do the trick. And just kind of shimmy off any of that excess. Alrighty, and then I'm of course going to save every last little bit of my embossing powder. Very important, make sure the lid is back on the jar before you do your heat setting. So I'm working onto my craft mat, which is a heat resistant surface that's going to protect my table. And then I'll just bring in my heat tool and melt that embossing powder. got that beautiful shiny metallic gold on there and you can see how easily that comes together and I love this because you can really mix and match your dye based ink colors and your embossing powder colors to give you a huge range of different options I just think that's so pretty okay I'm going to bring back in my card we can take another look here so you can see again that pear green with the gold embossing on here stamped right onto that doily. Now you may wonder, do I stamp it and emboss it and then die cut or do my stamping and embossing on a die cut piece? And it really just depends on what you like to do. So sometimes I like to have my die cut already cut and then I can play with the positioning, but it either way is going to be fine. Then I've layered this up onto a larger of the doily die cuts and I put the whole thing onto my card front. Now I've used the side step card cutting die to create my card. So let me show you the die here. This is another one of my favorites from Hot Off The Press. It's gonna give you that really cool effect. And then I've also used some of the pattern papers from the Poppies collection. This is also from Hot Off The Press and you can see the beautiful designs here. And of course, all double-sided. So those are the 12 by 12 pattern papers. And then I've got the Coordinating Poppies solid cardstock for this large doily here. Now, you'll notice these really pretty little embellishments. Well, these are from the Poppies chipboard set. Let me show you this. So there's a coordinating chipboard set with all of these really cool images here that you can just pop right out. 
use them as is, you can ink them and you can also ink them and heat emboss them. So in this case, I've inked them with shamrock ink, which is a darker color um, as opposed to the pear green. And then I clear emboss them. So let's have a look at how to do this because I love this effect. Gives you some shine and a little bit of texture on there. It really helps to enhance the ink color. So I'm gonna use the flower rather than the leaves for the demo. So I've got these two pieces cut out and I just use scissors to chop them out from this backing piece. It's easier if you have some of the edge to kind of hold on to when you're doing this technique. So that's why I cut around those with scissors. I've got some tweezers here as well that I'm going to use to hold things in place when I'm doing my heat embossing. Now for the flowers, I think I'm gonna use the hot pink ink for this and I'll just simply press this on here. Again, working onto my craft mat so I don't have to worry about um, damaging my table or getting ink where I don't want it to go or embossing powder for that matter. Okay, so I've inked this all up. Now remember I said if you don't let it dry, it can be wet for a while. Well, in this case, we're happy with that. <laughs> So I'll bring in again another piece of scrap paper and some of my clear embossing powder. Now I've got the giant jar here because I use this technique a lot. And I'm just gonna sprinkle this on here. A little goes a long way. And tap this off, same process as before. Just kind of tap that off there. Again, I'm going to use my paper to funnel that back into the jar lid back onto the jar and then grab this with the tweezers and just hold it in place and I'm going to heat set this entire piece with the heat tool. Okay, now all of that embossing powder on the flowers has melted. You can see that shine on there, absolutely beautiful. Now this is pretty hot, so what I would recommend you do when you're doing this technique is to leave everything as is, set it to one side and let it cool before you pop those uh, embellishments out of the backing sheet. But that's how easy it is to get that beautiful shine on there. It almost looks like they're lacquered really gorgeous and so that's what i've done with these little foliage bits here down at the bottom and i just have them kind of curling into the sentiment on here now i've also got some of the peach crystals which i've just glued straight down on here another little touch of shine on there and then a gingham bow and then on the card inside i have another doily die cut and an embossed sentiment and I've got some more of those embossed chipboard embellishments. You can layer your doily die cuts one on top of the other, and you can also nest them flat as I've done here. Now this allows the background color, in this case it's that green cardstock, to show through the lace edging of all of your various layers on here. So let's have a look. Now first I'm going to start with a plain circle of green cardstock. And this is cut using one of Hot of the Press's circle dies. So you can see where that shape is coming from. Then I've layered a large pink lace edge circle, another white, and then a pink circle in the middle. So I'm gonna get out some different cardstock colors and we can have a look at how to do this. So if you say we're gonna start with this yellow color, so I've die cut this using my plain Hot of the Press circle, and then I can start building from there. So I'll bring in another cardstock color and I've got my larger lace doily piece. So you can see that's gonna fit right perfectly in there. So I'll pop this down and then I'm going to take the doily shape that is nested right inside and position those 
Secure them down with a little bit of low tack tape, and I like the hunky dory tape for this. Secure both of those down together, run them through my die cutting machine, and then I will have a piece that looks like this. So I've got not only the outside edge, but also the inside cut out. So then what I can do is take this and simply glue it right into the center of my circle. So I'm able to get that beautiful yellow edging on there. So I can stop here, but I can also then, let's go back to these dies. I'm done with the large one, but I'm going to take another piece of cardstock and this middle area, so this die that made that shape, pop this down, again, take the shape that is the next smallest, position those down, run them through the die cutting machine, and then I will have a piece that looks like this. So the same process, just a little bit smaller. I recommend using sticky specs when you're gluing these in place, but I'm just gonna hold it down for now. Then I'll nest this in here and you can see how perfectly that fits. And then for the center section here, well, of course I can die cut a piece that will fit in here perfectly. And there we go. So there you can see I'm able to get a variety of colors and I've also got that continuity of that beautiful yellow shining through each one of those layers. So I'm going to move these out of the way. We can take another look at the card and you can see again the variety of layers on here. So I put the whole piece up with foam tape onto this floral paper and this is from the Carnations paper pack. Now I inked the outside edges with Dove Gray before gluing it to the card front. I covered the card front with another paper from the Carnations collection and then stamped It's Your Day with Black Versafine on here. The flowers that I have in the center, well, these are from the Florets pack. And again, these come in lots of different colors, just like those ink pads. And I'm using the punch color. So I've just glued a couple of those here in the center. And I've added a small bow from the 1 8 inch ribbon set. Then for my card inside, let's open this up. You can see I've got some more pattern paper plus a large piece of cardstock with Hooray stamped in Orchid. And then the script stamp is stamped simply underneath using black ink. So as we've talked about, you can over stamp the sentiment. You can also just place it beneath or above the main word. So lots of different versatility with those dies and with the stamps too. I have one last card project to share with you, and this is featuring a combination of the script sentiments from the stamp set. It's also using one of my favorite little stamping tricks. When a sentiment has a word or a letter or a symbol that you don't want to include in your project, you can often mask it off, and this stamp set works really nicely for this technique. So let's take a look. The original stamp, as you can see, has the ampersand to read and hugs, but I wanted to make the word hugs fit into this longer sentiment. So here's what I'm gonna do. Let's move aside the card and again, bring in the misty. So I have a piece of cardstock ready to go and I have the stamp that reads and hugs. So that's in place. Now, before I ink this up, I'm just going to grab my hunky-dory low-tack tape. Now, this is the tape that I use to secure my dies in place before I send them through my die cutting machine, but it also works nicely for masking technique. So I'll just snip off a little piece of this with my scissors, and I'm going to place this over the ampersand. Make sure that that's really well on there and then grab my ink pad, and I'll use the VersaFine for this, and I'm going to ink this up. Now, it's okay if some ink accidentally gets onto that piece of tape, that's fine. I'm gonna try not to get it all over everything else. Now, the next step is really important. Before you stamp this, you'll need to remove that ink, and I tell you this because <laughs> I've missed that step in quite a few times in my crafting life. So just a little reminder and then simply place that down 
And there you've got the word hugs rather than it reading and hugs. So it's a really nice kind of little trick for you to have in mind as you're looking at some of the stamps on here and thinking, oh, maybe I want just the word you, for example, to combine with love. That's another option there. So you've got some different choices and that's a really nice little trick to kind of have in your back pocket. So I fit the sentiment onto the open area of this cutout piece. And the cutout and this absolutely gorgeous background paper are from the Autumn Garden Paper Pack. Let me show you this. You can see some of those designs here, really beautiful. And of course, double-sided. And this is the 12 by 12 collection. And so the cutout is included in there with all that beautiful foli foliage on there. And I accented some of the flowers with the peach crystals and a gingham bow. Then for the card inside, I have this doily die cut with the Love You stamped in black. And again, a little bit of masking there too. And this is our final project of the day today. So a big thank you to our friends at Hunky Dory for these really versatile dies and stamps. They've already become a fast favorite in my crafting room. And a special thanks to you for joining me today. We're really glad that you're here and we're so happy you're a part of our Paper Wishes family. Do feel free to leave a comment. We'd love to hear what you think. Each item can be purchased separately and you can see them below. However, we've also bundled them into a creative money saver just for you. For the money saver, just see this webisode on paperwishes.com. And if you're watching us on YouTube, have a look in the description box below this video. You'll find a link that will take you to our Paper Wishes webisodes page and you can see everything I just mentioned. And if you enjoyed our video today, we'd really appreciate a thumbs up. It helps people to find our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. We create three to five videos each week so there's always something fun to inspire your creative spirit.